Get up. Singing is an athletic sport. Your body is your instrument. We need to warm it up. We need to stretch it out. We need to keep it nice and engaged the whole time we sing. Roll those shoulders up nice and high by the ears. And let the arms come down. Try not to bump your neighbor. Unless they consent to bump you ahead of time. And roll those shoulders up nice and high. As high as you can to those ears. I like back shoulder rolls. Back shoulder rolls leave you nice and open, big and strong. Forward shoulder rolls leave you hunched over. And as much as a lot of us spend a lot of the day hunched over, singing is the time where we're going to open up our bodies as much as we can. I am a six foot three, 30 year old adult male. Most of you are not, so your <laughs> mileage may vary with these stretches and warm ups. Know your limits. Please don't hurt yourself. If you need to sit down, if you get a little woozy, if something's a little bit too far of a stretch, accommodate to yourself. Do whatever is comfortable. Don't push yourself beyond your physical limit. However, it's worth trying to go a little bit more than you maybe think you can, because sometimes you're wrong about what you think you can do and what you can actually do is a little bit more. So go ahead and put that arm behind the head. Lean your chin down to your chest. Feel that stretch in the back of the neck. Never tug too hard. We're just using gravity to help us out and get that stretch. And switch sides. And you can rest both hands in the back of the head, chin down to the chest. Use your thumbs to rub out the back of that neck a little bit, loosen up those muscles. Any tightness in the neck, shoulders, face is going to creep its way into your throat and close off your voice. You don't want that. You want a nice, open, free, beautiful voice. And we're going to bring our heads back up and roll those shoulders again. Take our ear down to our shoulder. And roll down, chin to chest. And roll the other ear to the other shoulder. And we're going to go back the same way down the front. Chin to chest, ear to shoulder. Don't like the rolls all the way back. The way the spine is structured, the way the vertebrae is structured, is that if you roll on the back there, you can pinch the nerves that come out from in between your vertebrae. It's not super common, but I work with thousands of singers a year, and I have a long career ahead of me, so the chances that I'll eventually paralyze someone if I let them roll the necks around are relatively high. So I tell all my choirs, your vertebrae discs look different on the front and the back. The front roll is fine. It doesn't damage the, the, the nerves. The back roll can cause some damage. So what I encourage you to do is a straight back, and straight forward. You can roll side, front, side. If you want to do the back rolls at home, that's fine, but if I see you do them in here, I'm going to cringe, and so please don't do them because it'll make me very uncomfortable. So just do them outside of this room so I'm not legally responsible. <laughs> and roll the shoulders up nice and high. Thank you very much. In general, whenever you sing, you're going to want to do something to stretch out and relax the neck, something for the shoulders, something for the back. So as long as you're getting that, your, again, your mileage may vary with your individual body. Figure out the stretches that work for you. Find the things that are most comfortable. When I do the two or three that you absolutely hate and don't feel good in your body, just stand there and kind of mimic, but you don't have to do the full extent of whatever I'm doing. When we get to the ones that you, you want to do, use those. It's okay. You can self-accommodate and adjust as much as you need to. Arm in front of the other. Stretch out that shoulder. And the other. This is one that many of you may not want to do, but it was one that was very helpful for me from a yoga teacher, and so I, I like to show it to my choir. It's called Eagle. You put one arm over the other, top arm goes up, bottom arm goes up, oh, grab your palm, <laughs> then the elbows come up, somewhere you'll feel that stretch is right between your shoulder blades. And I've never found a good stretch for between the shoulder blades. I always get a lot of tension there when I sing. This one helped me out a lot. We'll do it a couple of times over the next couple of weeks so you'll get a chance to figure out the sync, the, the routine. It's a little complicated the first time. Again, it's top arm over bottom arm, top arm goes up, bottom arm goes up, grab your palm. Lift up, and you should feel that right in between the shoulder blades. If you want the added challenge, the full eagle is to add the legs in as well. Yeah. There we go. So, roll those shoulders out and shake everything out. Shake up the hips, shake up the shoulders, shake up the neck. Keep it nice and loose. Good. We're going to build up our posture from the bottom up. Feet about shoulder width apart. If you uh, feel comfortable hopping or jumping, please don't do so. If you don't feel comfortable, but if you do, in general, your body's going to land you in the most stable position. So if you hop up a little bit, your legs will land pretty much where you need to be. It's very rare if you jump or your feet are just going this, that feels awkward and uncomfortable, or for going like this. In general, they're going to land in a nice, comfortable middle position, right about at shoulder width, but again, that depends on your body. So find the place that's comfortable for you. I like one foot a little bit ahead of the other with the other foot a little bit turned in, so you've got a little bit of a tripod kind of action going on. If you think of yourself as a T-Rex with a big old tail, you'd have a nice support system there. That gives you a little bit broader motion that you can do without tension. So what you'll notice is if your feet are together, 
that anywhere you move off center, all the muscles in your body tighten up to keep you from falling down, which is a good thing, but not so good for singing. So in general, singing is less important than falling down, so your body is going to tighten up those muscles no matter how much you tell it not to. So we put the feet shoulder width apart. Now I can move side to side, keep those knees bouncy a little bit. You don't feel the tension in the legs and the abs. But if you try to go forward and back, very easy for that tension to creep in. That's why I like one foot a little bit ahead, one foot a little bit back. I can lean in, I can lean out, I can lean side, I can lean side. I can be expressive as I sing. The first Noel, the angel did say. Blah, 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 blah. I can move into the phrase. I can move along, and I'd love to see more of that as we continue to perform. They're not just there to hear your voices. In fact, they're not really there to hear your voices at all. All of these songs are available on YouTube with better pitch and better rhythm and better tone than we're ever gonna be able to produce. Professional college choirs, paid singers, the prime of their life, beautiful instruments. We're gonna do a really great job. We're gonna put on a fantastic show, but it's not about notes and words and rhythms. That's not what this group is here for. We're here to give them a full experience. We're here to give them live music, and that means faces, that means bodies. So we wanna free up our bodies so that they're free to express ourselves while we're singing, and not tight and restricted. What I tell my younger singers is I don't wanna see slackers, I don't want to see soldiers, I want to see singers. So stand like a singer. Good, bouncy knees, you don't want to lock your knees. If you lock your knees, the blood pools down in the legs, they go numb, and then you faint. And I don't want anyone to faint. <laughs> bouncy knees, so you don't faint. Hips, off. this isn't as common in your demographic as it is in the newer generation, the millennials, but you get a lot of this duck butt thing. People poke up their butts like that. If you feel like you've got any tension in your lower back, you might be kind of poking out a little bit there. It can help to rotate those hips a little bit forward. That way you free up all this tension around the core. That's where the power of your breath comes from. And the power of your breath is what guides the voice. So if you think of pushing your hips a little bit forward, just like a little mini hip thrust, just a little gentle hip thrust, bouncy knees, feet shoulder width apart, one slightly ahead. Now we've got our bottom half all set. Top half, we want that nice big elevated rib cage. Roll those shoulders back. Very good. Roll that head side to front to side. Never the back. Relax the neck. Head nice and tall like a string is pulling it up. Nice and tall, shoulders rolled and back. Don't let those shoulders creep up here. There's no extra space in your lungs up here in the shoulders. You're not a camel, your humps don't hold anything. You just want those nice and down. When those shoulders come up as you breathe, they close off your throat. Tighten up your voice and you don't want that sound. You want a nice, open, free, relaxed sound. So drop the shoulders. Every time you breathe, every time in between songs, every time another section takes over the melody for a while, check in with yourself and see, am I holding tension in my neck? Am I nice and tall? Are my shoulders back? Keeping up? Is my throat closing up? Is my face getting tight? <sighs> and release. My goal is that every, when I sing is that every breath is a full body check. So I don't just breathe. When I breathe in, it is, I, the, the image I use is actually something you may have experienced. I, I went to Boy Scout camp and we, um, whenever we were trying to go to sleep, our counselor would do this body relaxation exercise where you close your eyes and say, imagine you're cracking an egg on top of your head. It's dripping down and it relaxes your neck as it covers your body, every muscle releases and relaxes all the way from the top down to the bottom. And that's the image I have every time I breathe in. I see something like a blue or a red light that just kind of goes through my body and just let everything go and go back into singing mode because while you are singing, that tension creeps in. It accumulates. And so by the end of a song, you might have the first Noel the angel did sing was to shirt and bore shepherds in fields as they lay in fields. But if that's where you are and you use the breath to reset, in fields as they lay in fields where they You have those moments to reset, but it's not a lot of time. So you need to build that so it's an automatic pattern. Do that body check from top to bottom. We've got our feet shoulder width, one, out of one little bit ahead, bouncy knees, hips a little bit forward, shoulders back and down, head nice and tall like it's pulled from the string. Make sure that head is nice and relaxed. Roll it around a little bit. Very good. You want to do this check in many times throughout rehearsal to make sure your neck is free. Very easy to hold a lot of tightness in your neck and not notice it. It can be there all day long, and I'm sure you've had this experience. At some point in the day, you just, uh, maybe your partner puts their hands on your shoulders and gives you a little rub before you go to sleep, and you're, oh my gosh, I've been holding that all day long, and I didn't even know it. That happens all the time, so use that time. A really good way to check in, let's all tighten up our fists, tighten up your shoulders, and then try to move your head side to side. You'll notice that it kind of moves like a robot, like a sprinkler, just kind of jutting around, and that means you're tight and you're tense. Wiggle your fingers, 
shake out your arms, shake out your hips, loosen everything up, roll the shoulders around a little bit, and then move your head nice and smooth like a paintbrush. If it can move nice and smooth like that, it's not tight. If it moves like this, it's tight. So you can check in with yourself rather than thinking, is my neck tight? It's hard to know. Your brain doesn't always know. You just get used to the tension and then it stays there. So move around a little bit, check in, make sure it's loose. Go ahead and massage the face a little bit, get these muscles loose. This would be a good thing to do as you're in the car coming into rehearsal. You can do a little quick check in with yourself and get any tension out of the body. Around the jaw, underneath the tongue, back of the neck. Loosen up those muscles a little bit. Yeah, be nice and cautious. Yeah, go one hand on the wheel, one hand on the wheel. That's fine, that's fine. As you're coming in, as you're waiting. Thank you very much. I'm always going to want a nice, tall, open side as opposed to. Thank you very much. Nice and easy and relaxed. Whenever we start, we're just going to get things moving. Very good. Check in one more time. Make sure you're standing with your singer's posture. Nice and lined up. Very good. We're going to do a little bit of breath work and then we'll move into the vocal work. Can you show me your palms? You're going to take your thumbs and find those lower ribs. Thumbs on your lower ribs, fingertips touching just above your belly button. Again, your body is different size than mine, so you may have different proportions. My goal is that your fingertips are touching just about above your belly button. Your hands lay above that. My goal is that as you breathe in, you expand your belly and make those fingers come apart. Watch my body. It's very small, very subtle. I'm not blowing them way out to the sides. It's just about a centimeter or two that I'm popping out. The reason for that is that we're not breathing into our bellies. We're breathing into our lungs. You don't want to breathe into your belly, but the image of breathing into your belly leads to better sleep. When you actually breathe in your belly, you get and you don't want that. You want to breathe into your lungs, not your belly. It's not a beautiful sound. So, so but when you breathe into your lungs, you have the, the top can't change. Top is totally locked off no matter what you do up here. No extra space from top of your lungs. Around the sides of your lungs, you can change that because your lungs are trapped inside your ribcage and you can control your ribcage. Roll your shoulders forward, hunch over. Big ribcage or small ribcage? Small, small ribcage, right? Small ribcage, small lungs, small breath, small voice. Big ribcage. Roll the shoulders back, nice open Superman posture, big ribs, big lungs, big voice. That's the sound we want. But we can also expand on the bottom. We have that muscle on the bottom called the diaphragm, big flat floor on the bottom of your lungs. It's kind of like an inverted bowl, and it can flatten itself out to give you extra space on the bottom of your lungs. Problem is, there's a bunch of stuff under your diaphragm. You've got your spleen and your liver and your intestines and your stomach and your guts, and those things are kind of important. You don't want to just squish and compress them, so they have to go somewhere. They can't go up, because that's where the diaphragm is. They can't go down, because your legs are there, and your legs are full of leg stuff. There's no extra room. So they have to go out and around. That's why we're doing this. We want to train ourselves to expand out and around 360, like you have an uh, 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 inner tube around the center of your core, filling up with air. One of the best analogies a coach gave me was a belt full of noses. A belt made of noses all the way around your abs, and just breathe in with all those noses. You want to expand that space because you can't control the diaphragm. You don't have any actual control of that muscle. What you can do is make space and the diaphragm will drop on its own as soon as you've made that space. So your job is to make the space, your lungs will take care of the rest. So one more time, fingertips touching on the front here. Thumb should be about on the abs. You're feeling that squishy space in between your ribs. No, sorry, thumb should be about on the ribs. You should feel that squishy place between your hips and your ribs. And as you breathe in, you want those fingertips to come apart. One more time. And hiss this time. And you should feel some resistance in those ab muscles. Those ab muscles are working. These muscles are relaxed and loose and free. These muscles are working overtime. This is where the action happens. This is the power. This is where the power and the beauty and the tone of your voice is centered from the core. Everything comes from the core. Start and stop of the sound comes from the core, not from the throat. When I start from my throat, Ah, I can even change the tone and make it more beautiful and still do throat. Ah, you hear that? Ah, closing off of my throat and starting with the throat. Ah, ah, you hear that little click? When I start and stop with the core, ah, ah, it just fades off into the distance instead of. Uh, and they'll feel it. They won't know it, 
your audience won't say, I don't like how they used glottal stops on the, on the end of every phrase and closed off with the throat instead of breathing from the core. Your audience won't say that, but they'll feel their throats tighten up while you're singing. They'll feel it sympathetically. It's very hard. It's very hard. You ever notice somebody who really kind of like needed to swallow something and just kind of clear their throat and they're talking to you and you're like, God, just clear your throat, please. Oh my God, my throat feels so gross. My mom does that all the time. <laughs> so, so please, please, please think of focusing the sound here. This is where all the work happens. The neck is nice and relaxed. So as you're breathing out on that disc, you should feel those muscles working. You can press in against them and see if there's some resistance. Put your hands back there. This time we're pulsing. We're going to go <clears throat> and the goal is that you feel those abs work every time you start and stop while your neck and throat is nice and free and relaxed. Watch me once. Versus. You don't want the throat turned on at all. You want just the core. Breathe in deep. your Adam's apple, your Eve's pomegranate, your vocal cords, your vocal folds, your larynx, your voice box. There's a lot of names. Um, I'm mostly just going to call it your voice. You can put your hand down now unless you really enjoy having your hand around your throat. Um, that is where all of your sound comes from. It moves up and it moves down and it stays stable in the center and that can change the quality of your tone. When your larynx is way up top by the top of your throat, you get that kind of closed off seven feature kind of sound. When your larynx gets back to that middle space, you get that normal spoken sound. When your larynx drops, you get that rich deeper, fuller, James Earl Jones, this is CNN kind of tone. Um, so we want, by default, a little bit more space in here. You don't consciously control that. You picture the sound you want, you keep the relaxation, and the larynx knows what to do. So you let it do its own job, you don't force it down there. You don't push it, you don't press. Extra tension is never going to help. It's not even a threat. Your larynx contains the vocal folds, which are these two little muscles that flap against each other to make your sound. About the size of your thumbnails. Flat together like this, and air comes out through and gets chopped up into little chunks. The frequency at which your vocal cords vibrate determines the frequency of the pitch you are singing. So if I sing... 440. Or you're 220. Uh, I'm 220. I'm 220 times per second if I'm up there. 440 times per second. Every octave doubles the frequency at which your vocal cords are going. They're very small. They're the size of your thumbnail. They're muscles. They're made of meat. And they're flapping together hundreds of times, if not thousands of times, if you're a Soprano one, per second. There's a lot of danger of damage. Really, really easy to damage them. So you want to keep things nice and relaxed and open and free so they can move easily and smoothly. You don't want to put any tension to that system. So Every time we're singing, in between every song, feel free to use those sighs, the sirens, the relaxation exercises, all the stuff we're doing. I'm not always going to remind you, but you can do it for yourself. If you watch me in a choir rehearsal, when I'm in the choir, you'll see that I'm constantly, mm, mm, oh, oh, just checking in with my instrument, breathing, relaxing, oh, sighing, keeping everything nice and loose and free, because it's so easy to accumulate damage there, particularly with older instruments. You guys have a disadvantage there, but there are wonderful advantages to working with older singers because you bring so much life experience to the songs, and many of these songs you've sung your entire lives. So you, you have a lot more emotional expression, you have a lot more depth of experience and expression that you can bring to these songs that children just can't afford. They, they can have beautiful voices, and they can express a song relatively effectively, but having a 10-year-old sing a love song, they can't tell the story that you can tell. You have a lot of experience you can draw on for this, so I, I get very excited by the emotional experience the raw instrument is just not going to be the same quality that it was 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. So we, we face a challenge because when you're playing the piano, the piano is made of wood and metal and ivory. But this is made of meat, and meat is not the best material to make an instrument out of. It's very flexible. It can make a wide variety of sounds, but it's easily damaged and it's hard to fix. So the vocal health thing is my number one priority. I want you to be able to sing all the way through to the end of your life. I don't want you to lose that. And we lost singers before who just said, you know, I, I just can't keep up anymore. I, I wish I could do it. I want to be here, but I just, I, I can't do it. My throat can't do it. And I would hate for that to happen to any of you. I want you to be able to sing every single day you want to sing for the rest of your lives. So keep it nice and relaxed and free. Stand up tall. 
feet shoulder width apart, one about a little bit in front of the other, maybe a few inches in front, knees bouncing, hips rotated in, shoulders back and down, neck nice and relaxed and loose, like a string pulling the top, Superman chest, broad ribs, as you breathe in, fill the core, expand at the base, and sigh, a little higher this time, good, and we're going to do a siren, which is bottom to top and back down, sounds like this, very good, if you can do a lip trill for me, that's, go for it, if you can't, a smile, laughter, any tension in the face is going to prevent you from doing Relax your face like you just got back from the dentist and there's still some novocaine left in your jaw. And everything's nice and loose and floppy. Very floppy. You don't need the horse lips like I have. You just need a nice tight little one is fine. If you can do a tongue trill, that's fine too. Try that. If you can, you can do the tongue and the lip together. That's kind of weird and hard, but it requires a lot of freedom yeah. in the instrument. Any tension here at all is going to prevent you from doing that. So practicing those at home is a good way of learning to turn off those muscles and keep them nice and relaxed. All right, just give me your nice, most rich, most beautiful, warm hum. Listen to me. Listen to me means your ears, not your mouths. Three notes up and back down. I want your teeth apart, a big open awe space with your lips closed around it. Give me just an awe to start. Awe, ready? Awe, Very good, one more time all together. Yeah, we're not moving this time, just the first pitch, sorry. I just want to get a good sound, ready? Beautiful, very nice space. Lots of space inside there. We don't want ah. We need ah. Nice and open and beautiful. Yawn for me. Ah, ah, ah. When you yawn, you'll feel that the back of your throat opens up a little bit. You take the tip of your tongue and go behind your front teeth. You'll feel, oh gosh, that was a disgusting sound I just heard. Everybody's tongue's rubbing up against their gums. Very unpleasant. Um, you keep your tongue against the back of your front teeth. You'll feel that hard part of your gums right behind your teeth. It's called your hard palate because it's hard. If you keep going up to the top of your mouth, you'll feel that it gets kind of squishy right up by the roof of your mouth. It's your soft palate because it's soft. The hard one doesn't move, the soft one does. When the soft palate's down, you get that same kind of sound that you get with the high larynx. When the soft palate goes to a neutral place, you get your normal voice. When the soft palate raises, you get that big, open, beautiful choral tone, which is our default sound. We won't use it all the time. We have some Broadway stuff that wouldn't be appropriate with that kind of tone. But our default is large and open. So yawn one more time. Feel that space and sing an awe through your yawn. Lovely job, that's the default sound. So a little bit of <laughs> before the warm up start to remind you of that space is very, very helpful. Good job. It will mean that you will yawn at times in rehearsal because normally, unless you sing a lot, you're not using that soft palate at all. So when you start to use it, your body goes, oh, my soft palate's moving, I must have to yawn. And then you start to yawn. Yawning is a very interesting thing because it is contagious cross species. If a dog yawns and a monkey sees it, the monkey will yawn. If you yawn at a monkey, the monkey will yawn. Like, it's really weird. Like Our brains just kind of pick up on that really, really quickly. So you will yawn quite often when you hear me speaking with this sort of tone. When you sing in that way, you will notice that you feel the need to yawn. I will not be insulted. I'm a lot of things. I'm annoying, I talk fast, I'm too loud, I'm not functional, I'm not boring. I know that, don't worry. You can yawn, it's okay. It tells me that you're trying to find that space, so that's okay. Don't feel like you need to suppress it. Go ahead and embrace the yawn and sing through. Good, now wrap your lips around that to give me a hum, but keep that awe space inside. Teeth are apart.
your best Santa. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. You should feel those muscles uh, uh, flexing every time you do that ho. One more time. Ho, ho, ho. 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 Start and stop from here, not from here. Listen to me again. Uh, 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 uh. That's my throat closing and opening for every vowel. Uh, 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 uh. It's called the glottal stop. It's everything is closing off inside the throat. Can you go uh, uh, uh with me from the throat? Uh, 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 and say with a little bit of an H. Ha, ha, ha. That's what we want. This starts the ha, ha, ha. I don't like a big old H. I don't want ha, 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 ha. Because you're out of breath. You use all that extra air for the H's. So what I say is think of a very, very small lowercase H in parentheses in italics. Very, very small. Not a lot of mm -hmm. H. Big capital uh, A with in bold with an H after it. Ah, uh, very big, beautiful ah. Uh, nice, gentle start of the sound, start of the breath. From here, don't push all that air out trying to replicate each. Listen one more time. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Very good. Keep it nice and light, bouncy from there. You can keep your hands there for a little bit to feel those abs working. As soon as you feel like you got it, go ahead and drop the arms. That's okay. One, two, three, and breathe. Keep that yawn space. Big and open. Relax the neck. when you're pressing up against your sinus bones. You need to press pretty hard to feel the bones, so one more time. Sing. sing. Very nice. You guys are good musicians because you're picking the pitch that I'm saying. You don't need a pitch. It can be yeah. sing. That's whatever, wherever it is, is fine. Find a comfortable place in your voice. But I want that buzz in the fingertips. That's the goal. So one more time. From this time, we're going to go. Nya, nya, nya. Nya, nya, nya. Sing. Sing, sing, sing. sing. You know that buzz in the fingertips? That's ring, that's resonance, that's buzz, that's projection. There's a lot of words for it, but what it means is that laser beam like sound that carries your voice to the back of the hall. For hundreds of years, thousands of years, um, singers would often have to sing over the sound of instruments without any extra kind of amplification. The great opera singers all the way through the 17th, 18th, and, and 19th centuries had to sing over large full orchestras. A Wagnerian uh, uh, soprano would have to sing over multiple tubas, trombones, timpani, full orchestra, strings, flutes, everything, and still be heard with crystal clarity at the back of a 3,000 3, person auditorium. The reason they can do that is that there's a special frequency in the human voice right around 3,500 hertz called the singer's format that is not replicated in any other instrument. So it allows the singer's voice to cut right through the sound of the instruments and get to the back of the hall. That is represented physically through that ring and resonance from the mask. This part of the body is called the zygomatic arch, as my, my coach from Austria taught me. Um, and so if you focus the sound up here, you will always be heard at the back of the hall. As soon as I turn that off, even though I have this little amplifier on me, it's much harder to hear me. I'm not actually talking any quieter. I've just turned off all my resonance. It's not volume, it's ring. When I turn back on my ring, I sound a lot louder, right? But my volume is identical. Same volume as this, just no ring. Here's the ring, back in the front. One more time, fingertips right here, and go sing. Sing, sing, sing. Very good, keep those fingertips right there. Keep those fingertips right there. We say the word sing, and then we sing five notes on the vowel E. The same, the first pitch is repeated twice. Listen to me. Sing E. Don't leave that first note until you've started the E. Listen again. Sing E. 
You want to really bring that ring out there on that NG sing. And our goal is that you still feel a little bit of tingle through the E's. It won't be as much because as soon as you open up the back of your throat there to let out the E, some of the air is coming out of your mouth instead of all of it going through your sinuses. So it'll be less buzz, but it should still be there. So focus on those cheekbones and give me your best singing. Think fish lips, it helps you a little bit on those brighter vowels. E A R. 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 E A R.
Deutschen Postfits, beautiful. All o Beautiful, beautiful. We did this work a lot last year, so I'll skip the little question and answer, but your E and your A are tongue vowels. E, A, A. Say it again. E, A, A. You feel that the tongue is up on E, it goes down a little bit for A, it drops to the bottom for A. One more time. E, A, A. Good. O and U are lip vowels. A, O, U. O is much closer to U than it is to A. The problem is Americans tend to speak a very Americanized O, which is not an O at all. It's this weird kind of strange vowel that comes from the California Valley Talk. Um, we have many, many singers here who are Lutherans, which is lo lovely, and then Minnesotans, which is lovely, because you have that pure Minnesota O, oh, don't you know? Oh yeah, oh yeah, sure, oh yeah. It's a beautiful choral tone, yeah, don't you know? Oh sure, that's the sound I want. Can you say Minnesota, don't you know? Minnesota, oh yeah, sure. That's the sound I want. I don't want Minnesota, don't you know? Minnesota, don't you know? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh. oh. You can feel how much the lips move? Oh. There's like three sounds in there. Oh. I want one sound. Oh. 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 Minnesota. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, oh, oh. Ah, oh. Yeah, so O and the O are almost identical. Look at my lips. Ah, oh. Ooh. Oh, ooh. Oh, ooh. Oh, ooh. Almost no motion. Oh, ah, oh, ah, lots of motion. So make sure that you're getting that big change down to the O, and make sure that your E, 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 A is an E, not an A, yeah. Say A, yeah. I don't want that tongue and those lips moving. A, yeah, as opposed to E, E, like bed. Bed. E, E. Very good. Not E, E. Uh, uh, nice and tall through the off space. One more time. Take your fingers and put them behind your earlobes. Feel your jawbone there. If you open up your jaw, you'll feel how they kind of your fingers slide in between the jawbone there. You get this little gap behind your earlobes. Oh, it's not. It's a little bit taller than you actually need to sing, but it's a good <coughs> mental image to think under your jaw, get this big open space. Oh, I used to think that you actually had to sing with that much height. It, it's counterproductive to try to actually sing with that space open the whole time. It's just too big. But if you imagine that feeling, oh, that open space between the jaw, and keep that the whole time. E-A-R-O-U. E-A-R-O-U. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh. I'm going to sing for you. You can keep your hands wherever they're helpful. We want to use everything we just learned today. So we're going to keep our nice tall posture, feet shoulder width apart, bouncy knees, Hips forward, shoulders back and down, head nice and tall but relax. Rib cage open and expanded, breathing from the core, 360 degrees around. Your hands can be there if you want to check in on your breath. Fingers up there if you want to check in on that ring. If you want to have that open space, that loft, that yawn, fingers back here behind the earlobes. Whatever physical checks you want to do, you can do them all rehearsed along. That is your call. I will tell you when I need you to do something. Otherwise, you can use them as much as you want. Ideally, not in a concert. But I, I mean, if it makes you sound better, then sure. But I, I, uh, I may use some of these in the concert as a reminder. There's a song that we particularly have trouble with breath support. Before we start, I will come up, make eye contact, and I might go to remind you to reset your breath there. So if we do these in rehearsal, if you use these as tools, when I use them in the concert, you will have that benefit of going back into that mode and having that technique help you. So we're gonna learn a quick vowel one and then we're gonna move into our repertoire. <coughs> Again, it's E A R O U. Listen to me. E -A -O. Yeah, I want a, 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 a
Thank you. 